Welcome to the World Builders Anvil, Season 2, Episode 21, Searching for the Devil. Pew, 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 pew. Don't know where to start building your fantasy world? Do you need more? Does it make sense? Forget any worries and become a crafter of imagination. This is the place where we will prime your mind. Now, it's time to heat up the forge, break out the mithril ingots and hammer. Welcome to the World Builders Anvil. I'm Jeffrey W. Ingram. And I'm Michael Miller. Let's sup from the muck of Java and build. Welcome back. Not musically inclined, my name is Jeffrey W. Ingram. Uh, and always running from the devil, I am Michael Miller. Oh, going back to the actual song, very first. Yeah, sleep. well, you know, it's a good that song. A classic, 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 uh, classic album or classic uh, band there. Van Halen for all those of you who couldn't get it from uh, my pathetic attempt at singing. Michael just knows me so well, he could pull it out. Uh, <laughs> running. Actually, we're both wrong because the song itself is running with the devil. <laughs> not running from oh, okay. <laughs> he, yeah he's All like right. running with the devil because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm like yeah wait a second oh no wait 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 no no no. that's not actually what he says he says running with the devil not running from the devil DPS, but we're running DPS. from the devil today we're running from the devil today we're actually searching for the devil today because the devil is in the details and one of the things that we've not really done is we've not really Actually, we've talked about we have ideas of story, and we've talked about a bit along the way about uh, a group, a large group invading a small island. Now, when you're telling a story within the scope of that, that's not necessarily uh, what your story is. That could be the backdrop to your story. You could have a story of three friends in a household during the military invasion if you wanted. Um, it would impact what they're talking about. It would have influence in the story, but it's not necessarily this epic fantasy story. We never really agreed that's what the story is. So I wanted to take a moment and kind of go through some basic things I like to think about uh, when coming up with an actual story outline. We have a very vague idea of, uh, of of a story we want to tell, but we we need some more. And so one of the first things I like to think about, and this is really a very important distinction, is are you creating a story for an RPG or are you specifically tabletop or are you creating a novel story and in theory you could throw it in a screenplay or other type of story too the important thing is knowing that when uh you are creating for a medium is going to impact how you do a story okay so one of the first things i like to think about when i'm creating a story is you know what is the medium i'm going to create it for i've written down here on my list you know R rpg versus novel those are the two things that come to mind and for me when i say rpg i typically think of like a tabletop rpg versus a novel because there's differences in the medium and you need to know that when you're creating a story because uh when you're creating a novel story you need beginning to end all of the details in there of the story that convey the story to the reader in an RPG. You're creating what I like to call scenes and I'm probably not the only one. It's not like a brilliant notion on my part, but um, you know, you're creating scenes that are going to get pieced together over time to tell a story. And it might be over a game session or it might be over years. It depends on the type of story you're telling in an RPG, but it's important to understand the distinction when you're creating the story, because one, you don't necessarily know the resolution uh, to scenes in an RPG game. So you need some flexibility and ability to maneuver around. So I usually have buckets of scenes that kind of layer out. So there might be a couple different expected conclusions to important scenes that drive the overall story. So I might have a few ideas worked out, but you know, inevitably when you are sharing storytelling responsibilities with other people at the table, um, your plans as a game master will always be screwed up by the players. And that's not a bad thing. That's just something you have to understand when you're creating story um, because uh, that is how it should work. Uh, as much as I will joke and say you kill characters who don't do what you tell them to, it would be a horrible scenario if they're doing interactive fiction in which they are doing whatever you want them to. So uh, my, one, one of my favorite examples of this is uh, from a friend of mine's campaign. He had created a uh, a crucial character for the story 
and this character happened to be really irritating and um, it was a supers campaign. So everyone was some sort of superhero. And one of my friend's characters was like this guy who could basically put something. He, he had a high lie, a, a high mm-hmm. lie, you know, what do you call it? A wicked, a stick that, that basket, like whatever you call it. Mm-hmm. If you're not familiar with high, high lie, look it up. The, the guys, the piece of equipment they use is this big thing attached to their arm and meant to throw a ball. And you can throw it at extraordinary speeds, like dangerous speeds. And this guy could throw stuff at like the speed of sound, basically. So um, <clears throat> they they needed like a dollar for something or whatever. Like no one had any cash or local currency, whatever the scenario was. And uh, the guy irritatingly gave them a bunch of coins uh, mm. for some reason, I, I don't remember the whole scenario, but for some reason they were given coins instead of cash. And this was an inconvenient thing for them. So he put the coins in his high life ticket and used to kill, use it to kill the character. <laughs> and the GM was livid because he didn't have a backup plan. He wasn't as flexible yeah. and he needed that character. <laughs> so he had he to think on his character. feet very quickly and all because he chose to be incredibly annoying about it. Mm, most definitely. So if you're going to be annoying, Make sure to have backup plans because then your your players will make it a point to go after. They'll come back at you in 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 suit, I imagine, like many players do. But also, like if you're creating a, a RPG for a, a video game, or if you're creating uh, which is a little bit more rigid, or a screenplay for television or for movies, uh, that um, you know y- there are different types of things you you need structurally to make the mm. story work. And uh, I think an RPG is more like a television show show Mm -hmm. because even I think if you have a television show, you might have a a big plot, but like the studio might interfere Uh, after season two, they decide uh, they can't hire someone back or someone decides they want to move on or there are things that can cause those kind of disruptions too. So um, look to um, uh, look, 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 look to the medium you're in. And then, I think the next thing you have to really pin down is what is your central conflict. And for me, Michael, this is going to be for our, our not so water world uh, story is, you know, do we want an epic conflict, you know, like in a traditional sense, like a, 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 an epic conflict of an invasion, you know, you know, we're we're like a 300 style story. Mm. Is it going to be more of a character conflict story where it's going to be between certain, and this is very common in fantasy where there's a certain big, like a, a, a certain group of characters that are protagonists and antagonists that the real battles between and there are wars and fights happening around them, but it's really, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's the big, it's the big hero versus the big villain or their, or their small groups of minions. Um, or is it going to be an inner struggle, you know, where it's maybe it's the leader of the invasion force and it's a story about him. Maybe he comes to the conclusion that his people are wrong and how does he deal with this in the correct way? So it's really a story about, about that central character, even though it takes place on the island, the Islanders mm. might just be uh, people who are like, secondary characters. And it's yeah, this backdrop. one character in the stories about their struggle with what's going on, whether it's the leader or someone in the military. Let's so say we're a talking trooper who will then get wasted in the subsequent stories. I'm reminded of stories like glory where you've got a huge yeah. civil war going on, but really the tale is told very specifically with a small unit um, and with your inner struggle, I'm reminded of the movie Hero, where it is mm-hmm. a full-blown country-sized war going on, but the the inner struggle the, there's an inner struggle between the emperor and an assassin. Mm-hmm. Yep, and that's the actual story. Yeah. Mm. Um, and like I said, sometimes you know the big wars are just the backdrop. Um, now the next thing too, and and this is really important. There are certain story elements you need de- depending on what you want to create. Um, and, and first, Michael, let's make a decision right here. Do okay. you want to do an epic story, a character conflict, or an inner struggle story? Um, can we can we be somewhere between character and epic? I don't I yes. I don't want full blown epic. I don't want like world changing epic. I would like it to feel epic to a okay. small amount of people. So but maybe there'll like be, there'll be a certain group of characters that it's really important about. Right. Can we stick one more classification in their ensemble? Sure. Like uh, like an ensemble story where you have like, you know, between five and ten characters that you get to know well. When, when and, I call it an inner struggle, 
it could be ensemble or just one on one. So okay, so let's call it, let's well then just for inner because for inner struggle, I think of you know inner conflict stories where there's a whole might be a whole bunch of stuff going on, but the point of the story is the it's changes about one that are, person yeah, and their struggle That's exactly right. or two people, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, so I, I'm well, saying, because there a, a character conflict could be a strong protagonist, a strong antagonist, and it's about their conflict. So yep. that to me could be a character conflict, or it could be a group of good guys versus a bad guy, or a group on both sides. Okay, so well, so an ensemble thing you'd also call a character conflict. Yeah. Okay, so then just put a put a slash at character slash conflict and, and add ensemble, just just so that I know and so that our listeners get the distinction. Okay. Um, so so my my vote is then character In slash one, ensemble, yeah. yeah. But I want it to feel epic because if if somebody if if people are invading your home and trying to mm-hmm. take over your lands and steal your heritage, I mean that's that's epic, right? That's going well, like to feel epic to people the, involved. The first Persian War for the Greeks was an utter epic. Yeah, I mean, it was Persians, going to destroy. It was them. a border conflict. It, well, exactly, exactly <laughs> yeah. my point. Yeah. yeah, and so perspective is always important, and, and we'll have to sell that down when we create the story, which we'll do in episode twenty-two. Now, uh, genre uh, is this going to be a high fantasy thing, big swing and magic, uh, sword and sorcery, uh, I'll, aka Star Wars, or like dark fantasy? You know, what kind of what's this genre? Because that will dictate in it of itself certain types of elements certain types of characters you need to make that work because remember you have to set off the things in people's minds so they understand the story you're presenting and that's why you have forms that's why you have a genre uh uh when you're creating fiction well i think just the nature of what our we do low fantasy i i think low- we i think just the nature of the artifact that our one faction has yeah. That's going to bring magic in. Yeah, we kind of want some magic. Um, I I don't think the uh, invading force has much in the way of magic, and that's why they're after it. So I think it's going to be like, I I don't think there's going to be a ton of magic, but when magic comes into play with that artifact, it could be very significant. Maybe part of the story is some sort of high uh, magic. I would say some sort, maybe a character in the course of our story learns how to use that thing appropriately. And if that occurs, it could be very, very significant. And if people remember back when we talked about this uh, before, it was something where it's happened. The original conflict was so long ago that how to use this artifact has been forgotten. Yeah, it's a lost they art. They still have certain things that they could do with it, but it's, yeah. it's become... They're basically like, using a, a very powerful artifact to about 15% of its potential. Like they know how to use that 15, but if they were to activate the 100% of the potential, more to it would be but no, huge. Some people don't even believe it anymore. Like, oh, that was just stories. Oh, uh, like those them. were, those are just, those are just you know, cre- creation legends. That's how mm-hmm. we explain how everything came to be. I mean, it couldn't really be real. I mean, all it does is move water around. And, and this next one is, is, I think, an also important thing to kind of consider going into it when you create a story, a real story outline. Is one, um, is what is the the actual archetype for the story? You know, because you do high fantasy, but you can have many different levels in there. You know, um, you know for genre. You know, so but is this going to be like your classic hero's journey? Mm-hmm. Uh, is this going to be a journey for an item? Those two, I think, are very strong contenders here. Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, now you have uh, rise rise of the old gods, uh, pro which is good or bad. Mm. That could be here. I. I have no that from what we talked about though. No. Um, I want this to be boots on the a, ground uh, sort a, of storytelling. Tragedy or comedy. Um, and comedy in the traditional sense of the opposite of tragedy, where at the end, uh, the hero doesn't die. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or everyone doesn't die. Or everyone. Uh, tragedy, <laughs> you know, a tragedy is essentially it's a drama that's ended with with the death of death of the, the protagonist. Um oh, or pretty much that level of a death or everyone down to a comedy, which is, it has a good ending. It's really kind of what it meant in the traditional sense. Mm-hmm. So um, um, not necessarily comedy in the classic sense of, or what we think of today as, uh, you know, a comedy, which is ha ha funny, funny, um, which I think the Greeks would have considered anything where the hero didn't die. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm kind of, I, I'm stuck between a hero's journey, which it would make a lot of sense in this scenario where the person who runs, who needs to run the artifact at least has to uh, have that moment where they, they come together and then they get the item and they figure out how to really use the item. And then they, 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 they have 
the ending of a hero's journey, or it's it's a journey for the item, which in this circumstance would be uh, the hero, uh, you know, on the journey to figure out how to really use the item again. You That's know, what I was about to say. I think my I think my vote is somebody learning how to unlock its potential, whether that means they have to journey or search for basically instruction booklet, like they have to find like a magic tablet that tells them what needs to be done to actually use it the way it's intended. Mm -hmm. um, so they, cause, cause they have the item like that from the get go. They and to be have honest, it. people, there's not a lot of differences between these stories. A journey for the item is still kind of a hero's journey, but the item and the hero become to me connected at the hip. Yeah. Agreed. Um, but so, so we, we now kind of have the idea for the journey, you know, it's going to be a high fantasy setting. Um, which means there's potential for, for great shows of magic. Uh, it's going to be an ensemble character struggle. Um, and we're not sure how ensemble yet, but we know we want it to be an ensemble. And I'm leaning towards we're going to create an RPG style story for this mm -hmm. uh, because I'm actually working on another one right now. And so this, I'm already thinking about making the elements for there. So fair um, enough. Uh, so I, uh, I can reuse what I'm thinking up in real life for here. So without boring everybody with details on some of this stuff, when you're trying to figure out like what you want to deliver here, just take, you can, there's tons of places, tons of resources you can look up to define for yourself. Mm -hmm. Hero's journey, um, uh, journey for an item. I don't know if that's quite a, uh, a go-to thing. I mean, we might be just making that one up or is that an actual, like if I could look well, up I, journey for an item, like it's a quest, it's a, it's it, that would be a quest story, right? Quest story. Your question okay. for Excalibur would be the, well, journey that's what, for the exactly item. what I was, I was going to say or quest the, for the Excalibur or the, or the whole Holy Grail, Golden Fleece. Yeah. Perfect. Golden Fleece. usually the less Golden Fleece. with the hero. It's, it's focused on getting the, the thing item. in yeah. our circumstance, getting the thing correctly. So I think actually that's the point of distinction, right? So if it's a quest for an item, not a whole lot changes with the characters. Whereas if it's journey's story, uh, our hero's journey, it, the character changes a lot and learns a lot and grows a lot uh yeah. rise and rise of the old gods pro or con tragedy and comedy you can certainly look up tr classic tragedies and mm -hmm. comedies uh you also wrote down here other so what would you allow do you want anything to say anything, say anything that you can figure other? out you know go uh research there are 10 million ideas on on archetypes for stories and they're always almost always derivative and sometimes they're complex derivatives and and they're good backbones but this is one of the things you feel free to research and, 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 and find something that really connects with you. Cause especially if you're newer at storytelling, uh, stick with basics, you know, a hero's journey, uh, a tragedy, you know, the four I listed there, uh, maybe the rise of the old gods is not so much of a common one, but, uh, the rest of the things are, are typically good. Um, so do not, uh, get caught up on the things that you don't have strength and practice them. That's mm. how you'll get better at doing them. So um, if you want to write novels, create a novel st structure, even if you never plan on releasing it, just do it. Um, but yeah, you know, and really the, like the act structures will, will be similar throughout anything. You know, the, the, the difference is, you know, how you build the outline, you know, with what intention um, you, you need more to do RPG, to be honest. Um but it's 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 fun. If you like, it's, it's a lot more smaller stories. So, um, so if you guys have been paying attention, I know we had originally said that this season was going to end at twenty one, but I think we're going to go to twenty two and do our 20, outline. And then we said twenty, and, and then Jeff made it twenty one, despite my arguments. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think we're actually going to make it twenty two. Now I'm arguing for twenty two because we we would like to close the show. Uh, now and then do but we still want to do an outline right so we don't want to we don't want to, yeah. we're trying to shorten our episodes to make it a little easier a little more digestible for you guys yeah. so we're going to go to episode 22 we'll do the outline that we've just been talking about for mm -hmm. you know our our island conflict um is there anything else you want to say in closing uh, or yeah, can just we move on to the remember is the whole point of the season was to create a framework and and we're starting to get beyond that now. We're laying the frame. We're, we're we're laying the uh, we're laying. Uh, we have the foundation. Ground. Yeah, the we're laying groundwork uh, to move into the real part, which is the devil, and the devil's always the details, and that's what makes the worlds good or bad. So the real world building begins from here. Uh, but what we did is so important. Um, so keep in mind that you know you need the framework so you can quickly start spinning stuff off to get the details that are important for what you need to do. 
So let's keep that in mind. And now for the world building task, Mike. So the world building task is to outline a story for your world. It doesn't have to be one that you're working on now. It could be just like what Jeff was saying, practice, mm-hmm. practice, practice. So mm-hmm. if you've got something that you'd like to do that you that you know that you're weak on that thing, well, just practice it. Do a story outline for something that mm-hmm. you want to work on. You don't have to use it, but this is you know that you're trying to strengthen muscles, right? This is like doing push-ups to get stronger arms. It's no different. What's, What's a real? We all, you're like you pathetic worm. Well, I'm sorry, I'm well, well, the the irony is that m- if you're me or you, you'll be yelling at yourself, you pathetic worm, and which is also something we don't want you to do. Yeah, well, that's a, a episode for a different time. Right and now, for the real world task, um, I have finished up your framework. Uh, that's kind of lame. So uh, what we're gonna change real world. That. Yeah, why do you keep putting world builder tasks in the uh, yeah, real world know. task? You've been doing that a lot lately. Well, I'm gonna say is. Always keep your eyes open for opportunities that aren't expected. You know. Oh, that's um, a good one. That's a good one. I like that. That's a lot I'll better. Explain that at some point. So. But well, I mean, I think it just in life, even in bad things, and I will tell the story a different day. Uh, but um, but yes, uh, part of that. Keep your eyes open. Just... Go ahead. Uh, keep that in mind as you go through life. Is good and bad things that happen. There might be opportunities behind them, so be ready. Basically, be open-minded and spont- and be willing to be open to spontaneity. Yeah. Be you present. never know what can happen. Be present. Right. Exactly. Be present to the, to the moment. All right. My name's Michael. His name's Jeff. Thank you for listening, and we will catch you next time. Thank you so much for listening to the World Builders Anvil. We would love it if you would share the World Builders Anvil with two of your friends. And so would they. If they are unfamiliar with podcasts then you get to introduce them to the wonderful world of podcasting. Take them to Stitcher or iTunes, or best of all, just send them to our website, www.gardul.com. That's G-A-R-D-U-L.com. Now strike while the myth was hot.